That's how you welcome in the Shabbat. We do it every week. We got to do it here. We always said that this is the Shabbat in the middle of the week. But here we go. We're much. We're in Shabbat right now. Baruch Hashem, we've ascended into the Chaim Tovim Yishalom. Baruch Atah Adonai. Irvinu Melech. Aolam Baruch Peri Agevu. We've ascended after nearly three years, two and a half years of learning in this Chabura. We've made it to Shabbat Kodesh. Baruch Hashem. This whole entire book is based off of, we're still in Biyam Dakecha, right? Just Biyam Dakecha on Shabbat Kodesh. We are now going to be going into a book that is completely, completely based off of the teachings of the Arizal in Sharon Kavanot and the Rashash, but brought down in the way of Avoda that is equal for every single soul, as is the way of Marina Verabener, of Itzchak Meir, Morgenstern Shlita. And uh, this book is out of this world out of this world. Up until now, we've been learning many, many different topics on the calendar and different ideas on Abodat Hashem, whether it's um, things that we consider mundane, like eating, sleeping, and drinking, or our, our midot, our internal traits, and working on ourselves and becoming better people, right? Or in the calendar, right? But now we're getting into the crux of everything, which is Shabbat Kodesh. And Shabbat Kodesh... Shabbat Kodesh is uh, no, just your shoes. You can come and just take your shoes out. And Shabbat Kodesh is is the source of everything, right? Shabbat is the, the the root of the blessing of everything in the world, and to learn about Shabbat is going to take everything to the next level, right? It's famously said here in Israel many many years ago by a person who was uh, not exactly a Rebbe that more than Amisa has kept the Shabbat, the Shabbat has kept Amisa. Right? That was said by a person who didn't exactly keep Shabbat. Grew up keeping Shabbat, but then went away from it. So we have to know what is the power of Shabbat Kodesh, how much it can influence our lives, Shalom Aleichem. As David walks in, David, the aspect of the Shri, the aspect of Shabbat, Baruch Hashem. So this is, the, this is the introduction to the Sefer. I don't know how much we're going to get into. I'm warning you that this book is much deeper than everything we've already learned. It's also very, very, very practical. We've always been learning practical, but here there's practicality with a lot of details. I personally highly recommend, up until now, two and a half years, my father-in-law has been the only one taking notes. I highly recommend that people start to, to take notes. I have the book, I can go back to it, right? The video is recorded, but either you come here and you take notes or you watch it again, because I'm telling you, it's going to change everything for you. And the more, like the Ben Ishchai says, the Ben Ishchai says when you take notes while learning Torah, it's as if you already did a review three times. Right? Just listening to the shir and taking notes is as if you reviewed the information three times already. So how much more so when you're trying to improve your Shabbat? Again, the name of the book is Biyam Darkecha. We are in the book of Biyam Darkecha on Shabbat Kodesh. Is that and the this name of the book? Biyam Darkecha. Yeah. A hundred percent. As long as that's what you're using it for. There you go. So we can lift off. All right, guys. Seatbelts on. Starts like this: The karat la Shabbat oneg. The pasuk says, "You called for you called Shabbat a delight." Ah, it's on airplane mode, so we can take off. Hashem idbarach omer lanu. Hashem says to us, "Karat la Shabbat oneg." You called the Shabbat a delight. Uvezeu migalel lanu. By way of this, He reveals to us that the essence of Shabbat, she yom shel oneg. The essence of Shabbat is a day of pleasure, a day of immense pleasure. And it's great light, the great light of Shabbat brings oneg, brings pleasantness, brings delight to the soul. What song is that? Who knows? Exactly. What is the Rev. Carlin says there? The Rebbe from Carlin says, Shabbat is Noam and is the is the the tranquility. The pleasantness of the souls, and the seventh is the delight for the spirit, and Eden, the paradise of the body of the nefesh. Right. So all of these different levels is your Shabbat, right? 
That's from the songs, one of the songs we sing on Shabbat. Vine oneg udavar amok v'chashuv me'od. Pleasure is something that's very, 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 very deep and very important. Whoever remembers, two and a half years ago when we started the Chabura, that was the first thing that we learned. The gateway into pleasure, right? Why pleasure is so important. Like the Ramchal says, that we came to this world and all we're interested in is receiving pleasure. Right? That's, that's what the human wants more than anybody. And more than anything. And if you look, if you know anything about the, the Sfirot, then you have what's called Atik Yomin. Atik in Keter is all about pleasure. Right? Enjoyment and pleasure. Keter has two aspects to it. One is desire, Arichanpin, and one is Atik Yomin, which is just pleasure. And that is technically the highest. And it says, by Chazal say, there's nothing higher than pleasure. It's, in, it's from Sefer Yetzirah. It comes from inside the completion, the, the, the completion and the completion of the soul that feels such pleasure, right? When you complete something in this world, you feel good about it, right? Why? Because your soul also, when it completes itself and it becomes better and better and more refined and more closer to Hashem, it takes immense pleasure in that. So too, the, the pleasantness, the, the delight that you have in Shabbat is the outcome of the fact that on Shabbat Kodesh, there is this light that's coming down on the soul. Your soul is ascending to the highest, most internal point possible. It's getting to this internal completion that there is nothing loftier than it. And that's why Shabbat is called Me'en Olam Abba. So to say, a, a taste of the world to come. Ki Olam Abba uzman ha-shlemut va-onik. How this is connecting to our learning in the morning in the Ramchal. Right? That the Olam Abba, the world to come, is the completion and the time for the completion and the time for all of the pleasant, pleasantness and the reward. This world is the time for working. Olam Abba, which again is not the days of Mashiach. People make this confusion, and that's so how we ended our year in the morning. People make this confusion that Olam Abba, the world to come, is the times of Mashiach. No, not at all. The world to come is a completely spiritual realm, has nothing to do with this world. Like the Mesilat Yisharim writes, the, the Ramchal in his other book, Adam lo nivra ela Person was created in order to take immense pleasure, pleasure on Hashem. And to enjoy the radiance of his Shekhinah, of his, of his revelation in the world. The place that that all takes place is in the world to come. Here you're putting in the work, as much work as you accomplish, as much as you can complete your soul in this world, you will receive more of a radiance of the light of Hashem in Olam Abba, different world, nothing to do with this one. The only connection is that here you're downloading your ability to enjoy there, right? And the Jew is standing and asking the question, how do I get to this pleasantness of Shabbat? Again, a lot of people, a lot of us are Balei Tshuva. Some of us grew up with Shabbat. Most of us didn't, right? For those of us who didn't, when we first started to come into it, we thought maybe this is, well, what the heck? I can't do this. 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 Even for those that grew up in it, they started to get to their teenage years and then they saw the world and they're like, oh wait, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. I have to go to Shul, I have to do that. That's a very human way of looking at Shabbat. But we're, we're Jews. We should be looking at the in the Pnimiyut. And if this is what it is, Oneg and, sh- and Shlemut and, and Ta'anug and, and Noam and Eden, how in the world do I get to that level of Shabbat? How do I merit, to ta- how do I get to a level where I can take immense pleasure from on Hashem, from the power of Shabbat. How could Shabbat get me to take Oneg out of Hashem? And how do I acquire it internally? And this shlim, and, and how do I get all of this perfection and this completion that Shabbat is giving to the whole entire world? And there's very precious Jews that they have this tam, they have this taste of this good taste when they come to learn Torah or in the holidays, right? Mikre'e Kodesh. The holy days, the holidays, they feel this very lofty light. Wow, great, give out light of, of the Chag. But they start to take pain that they don't have that taste, that sweetness and that pleasant, pleasantness in Shabbat. Right? 
Does your Yom Kippur feel like you're every day, every Shabbat? Shabbat's higher than Yom Kippur. Does your, Shom, does, does your Shabbat feel like Yom Kippur? Do you take it that serious? Right? Do you take it that serious when you go into Shabbat every week? It's higher than Yom Kippur. It's higher than Rosh Hashanah. It's more important than any other holiday that you have. It's the source of blessing for all of those days. Do you approach it with the same reverence, with the same excitement? And they take pain that they don't feel it like this. And this pain is doubled. If you don't have this immense pleasure and this excitement and this tranquility and this, and this joy from Shabbat, it's a double pain. Not only do you not have that, it also means that you don't really understand what Shabbat is. Hashem testified about Shabbat that it is onig. Shabbat is a delight. So if you don't feel that, then clearly you don't understand Shabbat. Whoever doesn't feel this, no onig, it's just because they're lacking this, they're lacking this understanding of what Shabbat is. <laughs> Go and announce it, make it known to the people. The way to acquire this is, and every other idea in, in, in life, the way to acquire it internally is by way of the intellect. By way of, it begins... First things first, with the thought process, meaning understanding and knowing the idea. You have to learn about what Shabbat is. So this is first things first, our goal when we're going into the Sefer. We want to learn on an intellectual side, right? On a Sechel side, what is Shabbat? And when I understand what is Shabbat with my head, it'll be that much easier to connect it to my heart and to then to feel it. And then to actually do the actions the right way. And to do all of the alachot and all of the minagim that are involved in Shabbat, which are infinite alachot. Right? And whoever learns Ilchot Shabbat knows that it never ends. Right? And there's never, we've not, we haven't even reached all the questions possible. When a person understands it, then he's able to connect to it more. And he's able to really desire it. And to work hard to acquire it. In the ways that are fitting for that person to do it. And Hashem already said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Matana tova yesh li bebet gnazai, v'shabbat shma, v'ani mevakesh litna li Yisrael, lech v'od yam. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, whoever wants the source for this, it's in the second Shabbat on the, on the 10th page, it says, I have a good gift in my treasure, in my treasure, in my uh, treasury, I have a great gift, and Shabbat is its name. And I'm asking now, I want to give it to the nation of Israel. Go and announce it. Go and let them know that I have a good gift in my treasury and I want to give it to them and its name is Shabbat. And that's the first thing that The first things first then, in order to get to this Noam Shabbat, to this tranquility, this pleasantness of Shabbat, is to understand the depth and the meaning that goes behind those three letter words named Shabbat. What does Shabbat mean? What is that day all about? And to know what is Shabbat teaching us? And where is Shabbat elevating us to? And by way of this, we'll have a foundation that we will be able to be successful, Be'ezrat Hashem, to want with our whole entire heart the light of Shabbat. And we'll also be able to know what are the ways of work that we need in order to merit it, to, to merit to get to this level. And to work hard, properly, until we merit with the mercy of Shem, that the light of Shabbat should illuminate our soul to take immense pleasure on Hashem Itbarach. Right? Our pleasure should always be coming from Hashem. We can take pleasure from this world, or we can take pleasure from Hashem. True pleasure is infinite. It's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shabbat is not, is not about the rest. That's what gives you the pleasure. Shabbat itself is the tool to help you take pleasure on Hashem. Shabbat Kodesh, Nafshi Cholat Avatecha. The continuation of that same song, Vikai Echsof, says after that Shabbat Kodesh, right, the Holy Shabbat, Nafshi Cholat Avatecha. My soul is lovesick for, your, for, your, for the connection with you. So, what is the definition? What is the essence of Shabbat? Revelation of the light of Hashem. The the definition and the essence of the light of Shabbat is that on Shabbat Kodesh, it is a day that on that day, the light of Hashem is revealed in the world with a complete clarity. 
like the Arizal teaches in Etz Chaim, he says, "Belel Shabbat yored or gadol me olamot elyonim ele tachtonim." On the night of Shabbat, a great lofty light comes down, descends upon the world from the supernal realms to the lower realms. Umit gadol or atzmut atzmut me od. This light, right, of the essence, the essence of Hashem, the light of the essence of Hashem is very expansive on that night. Meaning, on Shabbat, there is a revelation of atzmutoid barach, the essence, the core of Hashem Himself, so to say. The cholak hisum yordim, in all of the concealments, they start to fall down. Kilashon Rabbeinu Torah Chacham, the Torah Chacham, who is the main student of the Rashash, and who is the path of the Rav Yitzchamayr on Kabbalah, Torah Chacham, his name is Rav Chaim Dileroza. Rav Chaim Dileroza was a, was a chavut of the Chida, Rav Chaim Yosef David Azulay, and they were both the top students of the Rashash. The Torah Chacham says, What, is, what makes Shabbat special? The fact that the light of the Ein Sof is revealed on it. That's coming from the Torah Chacham. On the six days, that the world was created in those six days, there was, so to say, a certain concealment on the oneness and the unification of Hashem. And if you look with the external eyes at the world, you see, so to say, as if this creation has its own existence. It, Hashem created the world and now it exists. It's like on autopilot. It's something, right? When we make something, the person that made the plastic cups, there's the person and there's the cups. The Avdil, that's not how Hashem does things. Hashem is everything. Right? The cup is nothing. The cup is <laughs> Hashem is everything. Right? So it appears to us with our physical eyes and with our human brain that there's a world and there's Hashem. Right? And that is how the six days of the week work. But that's not the actual truth. When we look in that perspective, during the, from Sunday to Friday, that's how it appears to us. There's a world. And there's Hashem. But there's two diff- there's, those are two different things. The world exists by itself. It's not true. Therefore the world is called Olam. The, world, the word Olam comes from the Lashon, from the word Helama, the Kisui. Uh, a disappearance, a hiding, a concealment. With a simple looking, a simple perspective of the world. It seems, it appears as if there's some kind of reality of nature. And that blocks the true godliness that is behind the whole entire world. And in order for this, because of this, Hashem Barach gave us the Shabbat. Shabbat illuminates and reveals very much so the light of the Ein Sof, the infinite light. And it reveals to us with clarity the simple truth that, what's the three words, phrase of every single thing we've been learning for two and a half years in this books? No, it's also true, but Enod Milvado Enod Milvado is the message of No matter what page you're on It's always going to be the same three letter Three, three word message Enod Milvado right? There's nothing besides a Kedush Baruch Hu. That is the message of what we're learning The world doesn't have any reality And existence by itself Everything is just the light of Hashem Right, we're going to say this again and again and again and again because we need to say it again and again. Because Hashem is what gives life and existence to everything. And when this godly reality is revealed, then immediately all of the klipot, all of the husks that are trying to cover up the truth are immediately re- re- removed. They come and they want to confuse us as if there is nature and as if the creations do have the power to make a decision, to change, to do anything. Because now, Shabbat Kodesh, on the Holy Shabbat, we see clearly on Shabbat we see that the, the truth is there's nothing, there's no reality besides Hashem. It's revealed on the day, we know it, we feel it. No creation has power itself. There's no such thing as nature, there's no such thing as coincidence, there's no such thing as happenstance, nothing, none of those things are real. Only Hashem who, 
who, who did, does, and will do all of the actions. Right? That is the truth that we're going to drill in a million times over. And this is another level of why Shabbat is called the Me'en Olam Abba. So to say, a taste of the world to come. Why? Because this is the whole entire idea of the Olam Abba, the world to come. There's not going to be any cover-up on the reality of Hashem. Everything will be nigla kvod havaya. Hashem's honor will be revealed. Therefore, Shabbat is called Kodesh. Shabbat Kodesh. Why do we say Shabbat Kodesh? Not Mikre Kodesh and not a, a holy day. Shabbat Kodesh, not Mikre Kodesh like every other holiday. He etzema Kodesh. Shabbat is the source, is the core of sanctity, of holiness. Like the Reshit Chochma says in the Shark Dusha, Shemahuta Shela Shabbat, he Shabbat Midgale Etzem Mitsiut Hashem Yitwach Shu Etzem HaKodesh. The essence of Shabbat is that on Shabbat, the essence of the, of, the, of, the, of the core of Hashem is revealed, the light of Hashem is revealed, and that's why Shabbat is called the source, the, so to say, the core of holiness in the world. So, you could ask the question, what's the difference Tuesday and Shabbat? Nothing. Right? Yeah. You said that there fails a little. Nachana, but so then why don't 90% but of Ami Sel keep Shabbat? Yeah. Okay. 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 There you go. You know, the truth is that the light of Shabbat, the light of Hashem, sorry, is bringing life and existence to everything. There's no such thing as a different reality or a different power that's separate from Hashem. That is a constant truth. It never changes. But when this truth is covered up by the eyes of the creation, meaning by our human eyes, then there's a room to make a mistake and to think that also the creation itself has some kind of separate reality and it exists by itself. As if, God forbid, there's some kind of reality and ability besides Hashem. This is what causes people to fall to sins, to fall to lust, because they think that this thing itself, right, is going to do me good. Another one of this is going to help me get there. But on Shabbat Kodesh, the light is, of truth is revealed, and therefore... All of the all of the cover ups are nullified, and then it becomes very clear and very simple that everything is just Hashem, and you now are, there's a clarification that shows me that the whole entire creation is just a tool to reveal the light of Hashem, and no creation has any reality to itself. I know for you that are come for you for those of you that come every Tuesday, it sounds like we're repeating the whole entire last two and a half years. We are. We're going to get into very, very deep things, but we have to bring this introduction to describe again what is Shabbat so we can go into understanding it and really apply the work that's, that's, that's tied to Shabbat. Everything that appears that, that the reality has some kind of, that nature and the world has some kind of ability and power to itself, it's not their power, it's the power of Hashem that's giving them existence. Like we know, there's a holy, there's a holy spark inside everything. We know this, right? We've learned this. Therefore, Shabbat is called Menucha Veshalva, right? Tranquility and rest. Once you understand that everything is just the light of Hashem and it's not about you and that He doesn't have power and she doesn't have power and the bank, the bank can't come after me and all this nonsense, everything is just Hashem. Ah, now, I can, now I can take a breather and now I can relax. Then the person, he starts to calm down because he knows. It's all Hashem. It's not. There's no other realities here. Therefore, you understand that Shabbat is the rectified, proper, fixed way of how the creation should be. Because on on Shabbat, you're able to see Hashem without all of these contradictions, without all of these cover-ups. Therefore, the Shechina, which is the Kala and the Malka, right, the the bride and the queen. It's revealed on this holy day of Shabbat. Like we say, Boy Kala, Boy Shabbat Malketa. Come, Queen, come, my bride, come, Shabbat, my Queen. The Shekhinah comes in Shabbat. The Shekhinah and Shabbat, so to say, are one thing. It's one idea. Because the idea of the Shekhinah is Hashem Shochen, Hashem dwelling in this reality, in this world. 
right? And being revealed in this world. And this is exactly the whole entire idea of Shabbat, that we're in this world, we eat three meals, we, we, we sing, we hang out with friends, we do everything, but with a much higher level of consciousness, right? Even though this revelation is, is, is complete, this complete revelation is coming on Shabbat, the truth is that the real, real, complete, complete, complete revelation is only in Olam Abba, only in the world to come. But in the week, on Shabbat Kodesh, that it's, so to say, me'en Olam Abba, it's as if a taste of the world to come, we merit to this more and more and more. Because in every single Shabbat, we have an illumination of the light of the, the infinite light, the Ora and Sof, for every single Jew according to his level. And by way of this revelation of the true light, then we're able to come out of the, the, the falseness of the world, of the six days of creation, and we go into the truth to live the truth, the, the true reality of the Insof, that there's nothing besides Hashem, and the whole entire creation is just included inside of Him. And we see that there's no contradiction between the supernal worlds and the lower worlds. Everything is unified. Because we were only created in order to, real, to reveal the oneness of Hashem. That's why we came to this world. And on Shabbat, it's all revealed. That we eat, but we eat in a holy way. Right? And that we do things, but it's... Right? It's all connected. It's all connected to this higher level. This revelation is felt in your neshama. On Shabbat Kodesh, there's a revelation of the true reality. Even though that's the case, it's specifically absorbed and comprehended and felt internally. Meaning, the neshama feels it and the, and the sechel, the, the, the spiritual intellect, is what comprehends it. It's not, again, it's not something that we see with our eyes. Technically, you walk out in the street. For us, here in Sfat and in Eretz Yisrael, you walk out at Shabbat, it feels like a different 26 hours, right? It's like a, what are, where am I? It's like a different wonderland, right? But you have the goy that comes in here, the Jew that's not keeping Shabbat. He comes here, he says, what is this place? Everything's like a ghost town, it's dead. Ask anybody in Sfat, is, 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 that lives in Sfat, is Shabbat, is, is Sfat dead on Shabbat? The complete opposite. It's more alive than any other day of the week. Right? But for the tourist that comes through here, he sees everything closed. Walk inside any of those closed doors. Fire. Right? Me'en olam haba. Right? So it's not something that is, that is revealed to your eyes. It's internally felt in your heart and in your neshama and understood with your intellect. But externally, with our physical eyes, we nearly don't see anything. Therefore, Shabbat is called Yoma de Mehemunuta. The Zohar calls it the day of Emunah. Because externally, everything looks the same. The klipot are still covering up the truth. Right? This world hasn't changed for those 26 hours. Everything looks the exact same. This is a little bit trippy to think about because we don't really think about it this way that much. Right? But if, let's be real. Nothing changed externally. Only the neshamot are able to feel and to live the truth that is being revealed that there's nothing besides the Shem and Anything that is not revealed, but, but is only felt by way of your neshama, that is already called emuna. What is emuna? When you don't see it with your, with your physical eyes, but you feel it and you know it's truth. And that's why I always like to say, emuna comes from the word ne'emanut, loyalty. Right? Because loyalty means even when the things don't connect, Right? Even when no one's looking, I'm going to stay loyal to what I, what I know to be true. And with the relationship and the covenant, which Shabbat is also a covenant, right? with what I have with Hashem. I could be completely alone in my house. Why couldn't I go watch TV? Why can't I go on my phone on Shabbat? Shabbat and Tuesday are the exact same thing physically. What's the difference? Emuna. Right? My neshama knows it's Shabbat right now. So I act differently. Therefore, Therefore, it was only for Am Yisrael that we receive Shabbat. Only was given to Am Yisrael. It's known, a goy who keeps Shabbat is chayav mita, is obligated in death. He's obligating his soul in, soul in death if he keeps Shabbat. Only for the holy souls of Am Yisrael do they have the ability to comprehend and to absorb this reality of this light that is being revealed in those 26 hours of Shabbat. 
כוחו הם מכירים ומרגישים באמת אלוקית. By way of the souls of Am Yisrael, and mixed with the Shabbat, are they able to comprehend and see and admit to the true godliness that's being revealed, that there's nothing besides Hashem, and then their emunah is strengthened inside of them, emunah tehorah, the nishmot Yisrael, the pure emunah that, are in, that is inside the souls of Am Yisrael. Because the, the, the core of the light of Shabbat is an internal light. Or shel asaga v'tfisa b'ruchaniyut shel abriyah. You are comprehending and downloading the true inner spirituality of the creation on Shabbat. This can only be felt in a neshama elokit, in a godly soul. I'm going to bring here, I'll talk about it later about the eating, but once I had guests in my house and we were talking about how, how much we eat on Shabbat. And the guests mentioned that they had a goy at their house a few years ago. And after the fish meal, after the fish meal, the, the goy was like, wow, how much, this is such a big meal. <laughs> and, uh, and the Jew said, uh, this was just the first course. <laughs> there's, a whole, there's still soup and meat coming out. <laughs> They're and like, dessert. what? How are you going to end dessert, right? And the goy was like, I don't believe it. By the end, the goy, the goy couldn't even eat after the soup. And the Jews would keep going and dessert and the snack afterwards and everything. How? How? Part of it is Shabbat, right? Rashi, what is we're going to learn about this, but Rashi, what does Rashi say? You get a nef Shabbat yetera, you get an extra soul on Shabbat. What does Rashi say? So that you can eat more. What? You get an extra spiritual soul. Rashi's explanation of the reason you got an extra spiritual soul, so you can eat more. How does that connect? This is, this is the Indian. Only these neshamot of Amisul can, can, can really, really download this. Therefore, even though every single Jew has a very, very lofty neshama, and their, their soul ascends on Shabbat. Every single Jew in the world, no matter whether they're keeping it or not, has an aliyah on Shabbat. And he receives an additional soul on Shabbat. In the body, there's nearly no difference, because the light of Shabbat is internal. And the Rizal says, Inyan tosefet Shabbat sheyesh b'chol ha'olamot kulam, hu be'ofen hazeh. The, the, the additional, the idea of the additional Tosefet Shabbat, Sheyesh B'chol HaOlamot, the additional Shabbat, this additional Neshama of Shabbat that you have in all of the worlds, is like this. Ki hine b'chinat ha-kelim v'agufim shalem, kulam kanu Tosefet Orot me'olim, u'be'otzmot yoter kadosh, mima she'aya behem b'tchila. On Shabbat, so to say, all of the vessels get this additional level that they didn't have in the beginning. The vessels themselves ascend. And people, by way of their actions, people, because of their actions, merit to get a higher neshama and nefesh than they had in the beginning. Your body is the same body, right? On Shabbat, Friday night into Shabbat, your body hasn't changed, your body is the same body. But your neshama did change. That's why everything is just on a neshama level. It's on an internal level. Your neshama actually does change on Shabbat. You have a different neshama on Shabbat. You get an attachment to it that you didn't have before. And every Shabbat is just another level. It's not like it comes and goes. We're going to learn later. The Torah Tacham explains. There's no such thing as siluka mochin. There's no such thing as a removal of light. You download, you downloaded light. It stays with you. So every single time you learn Torah, every single time you come to Shabbat, you're going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. It's not like the same every seven weeks, you get the same additional soul comes back to you, and then you lose it on Sunday. No, 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 no. You come, you get it, it stays with you. The question is, how much do you live it? It's going to stay. How much do you acquire it and make it that now in the six days when, so to say, it's not revealed, is it actually still activated? There's a lot of... Uh, I'm going to let you guys decide right now. Do you want to go everything that's said in the book or do we want to, to skip here and there? Because there's a lot here. No, no skipping. No skipping? If you say, If you say, Who is the person than himself? We had this question again in the Al-Sheikh this morning. Who is the person? The body is just a piece of clothing. The neshama, the Arizal says, is the neshama that ascends, or it's the neshama that leaves, God forbid. 
אז אם כן, מיהו האדם עצמו שמקבל את הנשמה החדשה? So then who is the person that receives the new נשמה? Is it the נשמה? Is it the body? Who, who are you? What are you? We had this question in the morning. Let's see what this says here. Yeah, we can't skip this. Shebevadai adam hu nishmato. For sure, the person is his neshama. Vi atzmuto, right? The neshama is the essence of the person. Uma mishtenahu, what changes is, kama or yesh ben nishmato. How much light is inside that neshama? וכל תוספת אור הבורא בנשמתו נחשבת כנשמה חדשה. Any additional light of the creator that is injected into that נשמה is so to say like you got a new נשמה. Right? It's a brand new soul. You get, your נשמה gets more light of its creator, more light of its source. It's so to say a brand new נשמה. נשמה חדשה. כי הנה ההגדרה המדויקת למהות הנשמה היא what is the, the precise uh, definition and essence of what a נשמה is? שהיא כלי רוחני לאור אלוקי, a spiritual vessel for godly light. כי אף שהנשמה היא רוחנית, even though your soul is spiritual, מכל מקום אין לה חיות מעצמה, אלא היא כלי רוחני שמקבל את האור הבורא, ששופע בה כל הזמן. The נשמה doesn't exist by itself. It is a spiritual tool, a spiritual vessel, that receives the light of the creator, that is constantly influencing the on it at all given times. Nimtza. So what do we see now? Shagufu kmo beged le neshama. The body is so to say a garment for the soul. And the essence of the person is the soul. A neshama yi koach vakli. The neshama is the ability, is the power and the vessel, the tool. Le kabel la sig litfos la gish et ha or eloki she nishpa kol azman. For the neshama is a tool to be able to comprehend, receive, feel, and, and, and contemplate this godly light that is being brought down on it at all times. This itself is the difference between the types and the levels of neshamot that we have. How much and which type of godly revelation and light is your neshama able to receive, right? Nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, yechida, asiya, briya, yetzira, absolute, all these, all these names, what are they? Different levels of your soul being able to receive the light that is coming down on it at all times. Hashem is 100% at all times, right? You go up and down on how much light can you tolerate? How much light can you hold and comprehend right now and feel? The difference in all of those levels of how much of a vessel you've made to receive godly light that is coming down no matter what, those are the levels of your soul that you are made up of. ולכן, יהודי, therefore precious Jew, מקבל בשבת נשמה יתרה, you receive an extra soul on Shabbat. An extra soul on Shabbat. שקלי וכוח להרגיש את האור השבת. אור השם יתברך, it is a tool and a vessel and the ability to feel the light of השם in a deeper way, in a stronger way. Like it's explained in the Gemara, אמר רשב"ל, נשמה, מי זה רב שמעון בן לוי? רשב"ל? נכון, נכון. לא, הוא לא בן לקיש, הוא ריש לקיש. נשמה יתרה נותן הקדוש ברוך הוא באדם ערב שבת. He says there, the Rashbal says in מסכת ביצה, on the 16th page, נשמה יתרה נותן הקדוש ברוך הוא באדם בערב שבת. An additional soul is given by Hashem to a person on ערב שבת, on the eve of שבת. וכן מובהר בזוהר הקדוש בפרשת ויקל. So to in the Zohar, in פרשת ויקל, it says there, כל יום השבת אית לא נוחה אחרה דשרה על עלמא. Every single day of Shabbat, there is a different ruach, a different spirit that is dwelling on the world. Ruha achara kadisha ila'a, a different, more supernal, holy soul. The nachta livnei kadishin that descends upon the holy children. The kifish katav Ariza, like the Ariza wrote, da ki ine bechol yom Shabbat on every single day of Shabbat mitosef laadam tosef etedusha 
there's an addition, additional level of sanctity that comes onto the soul, the spirit, and the, the nefesh ruach and neshama of a person. There is not one Jew in the world that does not get this additional nefesh ruach and neshama according to where he's holding. It's according to where you're holding, but everybody gets it, right? Everybody gets it because that is the reality of Shabbat. There is a higher ability to comprehend and to feel Hashem. That's going on with everybody in the world. Therefore, the more you have a higher level of an internal neshama, and how much more you, of an effort you make to elevate your neshama, to, to put more emphasis on your soul and not on your body, therefore you will be able to comprehend and to feel and to connect more to the light of Shabbat. Therefore, the main avodah, the main work, the main essence of preparation of Shabbat is to work harder on acquiring and improving your neshama, and to elevate your sanctity of your soul more and more and more. How much more you elevate to a higher level, and you get to a higher level of godly consciousness, on the levels of your nefesh, ruach, and neshama, the more you will be able to comprehend the additional level of revelation that God is revealing on Shabbat. Every Shabbat is Hashem is revealing Himself infinitely, on a higher level. Where are you holding? That's the question. Not is Hashem here or not. Every Shabbat, He's, Mamash, Hashem is screaming, look at me. I'm here. Everything is me. Do you have the eyes to see it? That depends how you act throughout the week. Are you sanctifying yourself? Right? And then you're able to, Then you'll be able to take immense pleasure in that revelation. The UD, or the Jew, you are able to merit to get to a level of emunah that your emunah will illuminate you like it's daytime. Like it, the sun is out, 12 o'clock, and everything is revealed. Your emunah could do that for you. And you could live the reality of Hashem always. So to say, until you, so to say, see the light of Hashem that is illuminating the whole entire world. And then the whole entire creation and every single fine detail seems as if they're just vessels for the light of Hashem. Because there's nothing besides them at all. We're nearly done, guys. Page and a half. Two pages. So this feeling and this comprehension that the Neshama recognizes the true godliness of the world, that is the most internal and aspect and core of Onig. What is pleasure? What is delight in this world? Recognizing Hashem. This is what the soul needs. This is what it's seeking out at all the times. That your neshama is always seeking out to comprehend, to recognize, to cling to the light of God, the light of life, the source of all vitality. Therefore, Shabbat is called Oneg. On Shabbat Kodesh, your Neshama receives this sparkling, clean uh, light. You get to tranquility and immense, immense pleasure and del delicacy, delight, from the light of Emuna. That is, you have a revelation to your Neshama of godly light. It made clear to your neshama that there's nothing besides Hashem. Your soul take, it feels like it's in paradise just being able to feel that you feel your Father in Heaven. You feel your connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To live with Him all the time. Because this is the only true pleasure that your neshama takes. Feeling its source, like it's written in the Zohar in Parashat Vitro, Itro. Vikarat el Shabbat Oneg, Tane Bahayoma, Konishmet Ahondi Tzadikaya, Mit Adne, Bitafnuke, Atika Kadisha, Beucha Dami, Inuga, De Ahu, De Mit Pashta, Behulahu Almin, De Salka Benachta, Lehulahu Bene Kadishi, Lehulahu Nitre, Oraita, Benaika Benaika Shalim. On the day of Shabbat, the Zohar says, There is this. All the, all the neshamas of the tzaddikim, 
they start to take this pleasure, this immense delicacy in 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 a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and your soul is is taking delight on on the light that is spreading out over all worlds. The salka ve'nachta lechulahu b'nei kadishin. There's an ascent and a and a and a descent on all of the holy children. The chulahu nitrei oraita to all of those who are guarding the Torah, all of those that keep the Torah. Benaicha benaicha shalim. Benaichin benaicha shalim. And they have complete complete rest, right? Why? Mitnashev mekulahu kol rogzin v'chol dinin v'chol pulchin kashin. All, all of the hard work, all of the disagreements, all of the anger in the world is completely rested. Because people are comprehending it's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What's the main aspect of work on Shabbat? Dvekut vebitu. Attachment to Hashem and nullification. Since the essence of the light of Shabbat is the revelation of Hashem in the whole entire world, then... The main avoda lemaase, the main practical avoda on Shabbat is to merit to receive this revelation, and to go into deeper and deeper uh, attachment to the truth of Hashem, from a place of emuna, clear emuna, in the reality and the oneness of Hashem. And the dvekut has to be so strong, meaning the person has to be able to cling to Hashem so much, until that even in the times of hardship and dryness, the person will stay clinging to Hashem. And he'll get to a point that in all of the situations that Hashem takes him through in life, he will stay clinging to Hashem. Like it says in Iov, in Job, Hen iktalani lo Even if you kill me, I'm not going to... Yeah, even if Hashem kills me, I still want to be connected to him. I still want him. Therefore, Hashem caused that you should have different emotions. You should have a change in your emotions and how you feel. Sometimes even on Shabbat you don't feel the light. What's the goal? That a person should go into a deeper level of, of, of dvekut, dvekut etzem. It's a love that is not dependent on anything, unconditional love. And he'll say, I am attached to Hashem because He is the truth. He is the whole entire reality and there's nothing besides Him. I love Him with all of my heart. And this is the truth, whether I feel feelings of dvekut and attachment, or even if I don't. In a deeper sense, from an illumination of this truth, that there's, that there's enod min vado, there's nothing besides Hashem, shemeira b'shabbat, that is illuminated on Shabbat, a person is able to merit, to ascend, and to elevate himself to, to levels of bitul. That is, the bitul is the completion of dvekut. Dvekut is attachment to Hashem, but I attach to Hashem, so to say two beings hugging each other. Right? The higher level of that is that there's no me. We just unified in one and I'm included inside his light. The level of Bitul, not only do you feel Hashem and you're connected to him, so to say, like we said, you're hugging him, but rather you feel Hashem so strong and so clearly that you feel only Hashem and you are nullified and you feel the reality of Hashem and you don't even feel yourself in front of Hashem and you're included inside of him in love. And the truth is, bitul umiklal pinmiut oneg shabbat. Bitul is included inside the internal aspects of what's called oneg on shabbat. This delight, this pleasantness that we have on shabbat. Kimishu zochel bitul yeshlo ta'anug amiti yatsum v'nifla. Whoever merits to get to this level of bitul, of nullification, of inclusion inside the light of Hashem, not being not being someone, but rather being some of the one, right? Then he gets this high level of. Of joy, of, of of tranquility, of an intense, intense feeling of true pleasure. And when it comes to the work of Bitul to Hashem, we already went through this in in uh, when we were in the regular Biyam Dakeha. We did all entire. That's when you were going to America. Huh? You came back, remember? So Bizat Hashem, you can go back. Those videos are recorded. The whole entire guide of how to go through Bitul and what what is Bitul. L'chaim l'chaim. Don't forget, we're learning Torah in order to connect to Hashem. It's the reminder from the friendly reminder from the Baal Shem Tov. Zoya avodah lemaase. This is the work lemaase. Lashkia ba'avodat etvekut ve'abitul. To put emphasis and invest in tvekut and bitul. You need to invest in this. Nitabek bo itbarach becholev. To cling to Hashem with all your heart, by way of what? 
What are the two main ways to get to Dveikud and Bitu? Guys? What are the two main ways to get to Dveikud and Bitu? Thinking about the Havar? <coughs> his Borodus and his Borodus? It just means I'm not doing my job well enough. <laughs> <laughs> Torah and Tefillah! Torah and Tefillah! Torah and Tefillah! All a Jew has is Torah and Tefillah! Torah and Tefillah! Torah and Tefillah! To learn and to pray. Veshirot v'tishbachot and to sing songs and to praise the Kaddish Baruch Hu and to think from Hashem and think about His revelation of His light and the revelation of His Shekhinah and to feel the Kaddish Baruch Hu this is the main internal avoda of Shabbat. To sing songs, to learn Torah, to pray. That's why we pray five prayers on Shabbat. Four, right? That's why we pray so much on Shabbat. We eat so much on Shabbat because we can sing during Shabbat and we can talk about Hashem and we can talk about the things that happened in our week and how Hashem was there and talk more and more and more and think about how Hashem is being revealed constantly. To feel Him, to, to feel the revelation. This is the main aspect of the internal work of Shabbat. To ascend in the Muna in our Creator and to attach ourselves to Him and cling to Him even more. And in the second chapter, when we get there, Bezat Hashem, we're going to explain how to get there practically. But here we have to bring this already. The main aspect of Shabbat is Dvekut, even though that's the case. This is the pnimiut of the mitzvah of remember the Shabbat to sanctify it. Remember the day of Shabbat to sanctify it. That is a mitzvah from the Torah. Remember the day of Shabbat in order to sanctify it. To, to remember the light and the sanctity of Shabbat, meaning to remember Hashem at all times and to cling to Him and to nullify yourself and include yourself back inside His light. Even though that's the case, and that's the internal meaning of that mitzvah, you have to be careful of chasing too much light in life. Pay attention to only deal with this according to the level that you're holding at. And what is the, what is the way for you to figure that out? If a person knows if he's doing it according to his level or not, do you get light and pleasure when you do it? When you start to deal with these things, to think about Hashem, to sing about Hashem, to pray, do you get light? Do you get pleasure from it? Meaning, do you feel that your neshama is besimcha when you're doing the avoda? Of course, if we're talking about the alacha, you have to do it, it doesn't matter how you feel, right? Showing up to shacharit and Shabbat, it doesn't matter if you feel good about it or not. You gotta do it. Right? Eating three meals in Shabbat doesn't matter how you feel about it. But sitting and taking an hour to contemplate and meditate on Shabbat in order to get higher level, right? If you're not holding by meditating on an hour on Shabbat, right, then you're chasing too much light and it's not going to be healthy for you. You have to be rested in that level. You can only be working on the level that you're really at. So, Last two pages. Last page, I know he just said that, but that's it. Now for real. Shabbat menucha. Shabbat menucha. Zoi menucha amiti. This is the true rest of Shabbat. Like we say in the Tefillah. Yakiu banecha v'yidu ki mi'itecha hi menuchatam v'an menuchatam yakdishu et shemecha. We say in the Tefillah of Shabbat, your children will recognize and know that from you is their rest and by way of their rest, they will sanctify your name. Because the rest that we have is not some kind of external rest. That's what the people in the beginning of their way of keeping Shabbat think, right? Ah, today I don't have to work. That's not what it's about. Yeah, you do a lot. When you really keep Shabbat, you do a lot, right? It's probably most of your active day in, in the whole entire week. Mainly, it's an internal tranquility. It's this internal rest. It's the tranquility and the rest of the soul of a person who has emunah in Hashem and that trust in Hashem. It is the joy of the heart of the lover and the clinger to Hashem. It is the fortune and the joy of a person who merits to nullify himself to Hashem. 
ואין די בשמירת שבת במעשה בלבד. It's not enough just to keep Shabbat in your actions, meaning I didn't turn on the light, or I didn't do that, or I did that. Following the, checking the V's of Shabbat is not what it's about. לשבות ולנוח ממלאכות בחיצוניות. It's not enough to not go to work, to not drive the car, to not put on your phone. That's not what Shabbat's about. אלא צריך גם להשקיע בפנימיות. You have to invest in the internal aspect of Shabbat. ולהתענג על שמירת המחשבה והלב. You have to take immense pleasure in guarding your thoughts, in guarding your, your, your heart. להיות דבוקים בו יתברך באמת, to guard them in what? In the state of attachment to Hashem in truth. שזו המנוחה האמיתית. That is true rest. That is the true tranquility we're seeking out of. <coughs> not to mean that I'm not going to do anything for 25 hours, I'm going to sleep in my bed. That's not the rest of the Shabbat. That's not the rest that the Torah is talking about. The rest is knowing that everything is Hashem and it's not all about me. Right? And this is a fact, scientifically proven, no matter what religion or what faith, right? It doesn't matter. It's proven already scientifically that people that have emuna in anything, even pastafarism, right? <laughs> Anybody that has faith in something beyond them, bigger than them, they have a healthier life. They have less tr- problems in their heart. They have less chances of heart disease and any other sickness because it's not all about me. And the downfall, I'm not going to take it on myself. The success, I'm also not going to take it all to myself. There's something beyond me that is helping me and leading me throughout the world. Oh, you have to stay. Show up here every Tuesday, and we're going to learn all of this, and you're going to get it. This book, like we said in the, right before you walked in, the book is called Shabbat Kodesh, but it's going to teach you about Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? And you're going to see, now we're in the introduction. When we start next week, you're going to see or maybe the week after that, that just like the Rav Chaim Vital starts his book, Rav Chaim Vital starts his book on Shabbat, with what day? Sunday. Sunday, Motzei Shabbat. Motzei Shabbat is the beginning of Shabbat. Right, that's where Rav Chaim Vital starts all of his teachings, the reason his teachings on Shabbat, he starts with Motzei Shabbat. Right? So too, this book is also going to do this, it's just getting an intro into Shabbat. Bidiuk, but that's the beginning of Shabbat. Right? You're going to see, you're going to, it's all going to, it's all going to connect back, Bezat Hashem. Therefore, there's specific halachot, there's specific uh, laws, right? What is proper speech on Shabbat? Right? Like in Ki Yashmerah Shabbat, we say there, you're not allowed to talk about kings, you're not allowed to talk about wars, you're not allowed to talk about business, right? You're not allowed to make plans for the, during the week. You, there's rules of how to speak on Shabbat. You can't talk politics. You can't just talk about whatever you, whatever you feel like. Speech is a tool of thought. And you're not allowed to, you have to be very careful to not speak or be busy with mundane things, or weekday things. This distracts your thoughts from the main aspect of the avoda of what is Shabbat. The internal avoda of Shabbat is to be attached to Hashem at all times. Therefore you can't talk about things that will distract you from that work. Your speech is just an outcome of what you're thinking about. So if you're not, if you're thinking about the weekday, right? Like one of my least favorite questions on Shabbat is, when is this thing over? When is, when is Suda Shishu? When are we praying Arvit? Whenever we feel like praying Arvit. What do you mean? Arvit means Motzei Shabbat. Right now we're in Shabbat. What are you asking about Arvit? <laughs> we're in Shabbat right now. Right? We are meant to be thinking about Hashem, thinking about Emuna and the reality of Hashem and to cling to Him. And even though, the the rabbis tell us, thinking about weekday things is permitted. You're not allowed to speak about it, because that's already an action, right? But thinking about it, it's permitted. Even though that's the case, that's not, that's not, uh, that's not really doing it, right? We're not, we shouldn't be there. Rather, the, the attribute of the pious people, the people serving Hashem, the people that love Hashem, we don't think about things of the weekday at all. Rather, you should think that everything I need to do is done. Right now, I completed all the work I could do. Right now is the time to be resting. It's not about, not, everything's done. I don't need to be worried about anything. What is the main aspect of man? His thoughts. If a person is thinking about physicality and multiplicity, 
אז הם זורקים אותו מגן עדן, then they throw you out of גן עדן. שהוא המקום שהאדם רואה בבהירות את מציאות השם יתברך. What is גן עדן? The place where you see godly reality and truth. ואילו כשאדם חושב באלוקות ודבקות בביטול, when a person thinks about godliness and, and attachment and ביטול and nullification, then בזה הוא נכנס לגן עדן, that's how you get into גן עדן. וחי במנוחת אהבה ושלום והצלחה. Then you start to live with tranquility and rest and love and peace and success. Hashpat HaShabbat al kol HaShavua. We have seven paragraphs left. Vina Aor Gadol HaShemir B'Shabbat, this great light that illuminates on Shabbat, v'akorach hazeh shenitan b'Shabbat l'shemot Yisrael, and the power that is given to the souls of Israel on Shabbat, l'hasig et ichud HaShem Yitbarach, to acquire the oneness of HaShem, and to cling to him, and to nullify ourselves to him. The truth is, it's not only on Shabbat that you could do this. The light is not only there on Shabbat. Shabbat, The light of Shabbat, which is the light of the unification of Hashem, the oneness of Hashem, is a constant reality, is a constant light. This is literally all of the work that you have to do in your life. is to know the oneness of Hashem, to seek out the Shekhinah, to recognize and to know Havaya, to Yud Kevavke, to know Hashem, to cling to Him, and to reveal Him in the world. Only thing is though, the ability to see this truth, is given to us on Shabbat. Shabbat is the time to download the ability to see God on Wednesday. וצריך שעל ידי שבת קודש נזכה לדבקות תמידית כל השבוע. It needs to be then that by way of Shabbat we will be able to get to דבקות, constant דבקות for the whole entire week. And by way of the light of Shabbat we will merit to live a life of light of אמונה clearly all of our days because from שבת קודש מתברכים כל הימים. From שבת קודש all of the days are blessed. <coughs> בכל נראה שיש טבע, even though during the six days of the week it appears as if there's nature, we have to know and not to remember that on the day of Shabbat we had clarity and we had that light. Rather we should remember the truth, the internal truth that there's nothing besides Hashem יתברך, אין עוד מלבדו יתברך, ולהכניס את האמת הזאת לימי החול, and to take this truth and inject it into the weekdays, the mundane days, and to act accordingly the whole entire week, And to live a life of truth, a life of emuna, a life of dvekut, and by way of this, we will be able to acquire in our soul completely in truth, brit olam, right? A an internal covenant. And even though that that's just a footnote that I skipped just to finish that paragraph, but the days of the week they receive from Shabbat, they receive all of the spiritual and physical blessing. All the shefa comes from Shabbat. It's a Monday, it's Tuesday. Right? Every day of the week receives from Shabbat. The truth is they also prepare you for the Shabbat. So I kind of answer your question in a bit. Because in the day of the week, you do the day of the week. According to the level of hard work and effort and misirut nefesh you have in your avodat Hashem throughout the week, That is how much more so you're going to have a revelation on Shabbat and more pleasantness and more delight on Shabbat. Because on Shabbat, on Shabbat, there's an in-gathering on all of the different parts that you worked on throughout the week. They all come together. And by way of that ability of that in-gathering of all of those good points, you merit to take, uh, to take uh, immense pleasure in that light. Because according to your work and your... Uh, your effort that you put in, that shows how much of a yearning and a longing, how much, right? The more you showed up to Shacharit throughout the week, that shows how much more you want Hashem, right? You put in the effort to wake up even though you didn't feel like waking up. So too, that will be the abundance that comes down to you on Shabbat. Whoever put in an effort on Erev Shabbat, he will eat on Shabbat. That is what Chazal says, right? What is that all about? You put in the work during the week, now you'll be able to take in the pleasure and the reward on Shabbat. So too, another thing that I heard about this once is that whoever tarach be'erev Shabbat, whoever made a big idea about preparation for Shabbat, 
he will eat on Motzei Shabbat, he will eat on Shabbat. What does that mean? His children will eat on Shabbat. Right? That if you make a big idea about Shabbat, your children will eat Shabbat. Your, your children will make a big deal about Shabbat. When does this happen? In our prayers, in our tefillah, every single day. According to the avod of that same day, so too you will merit a revelation of Hashem in your tefillah. So too it's on Shabbat. Shabbat, what is Shabbat? One long tefillah. One long prayer. 25 hour meditation. That's what tefillah, that's what Shabbat is. That's what Shabbat is. In correspondence, in relation to what is the six days of the week, Shabbat is one long davening, one long tefillah. Because on Shabbat, all of the hard work you put in for six days comes together, and by way of that, all of the light comes down to illuminate your reality. And therefore the tzaddikim are this aspect of Shabbat. Like the Zohar writes, The nefesh, the talmid chacham, it karit Shabbat. The nefesh, the soul of a talmid chacham is called Shabbat. Because the tzaddikim live this light all the time. Summary for today, Shabbat Kodesh, on Shabbat Kodesh, Hashem reveals His light. And therefore, all of the cover-ups, all of the concealments are nullified, and the Shekhinah starts to ascend. And the souls of Israel start to absorb this truth, and they also elevate and ascend in their emuna, in their dveikut, in their bitul to Hashem, and they start to take immense joy and del delight in Hashem, and they start to get to true rest and true tranquility with Emuna, and the light, this light, starts to illuminate and influence also the weekdays that will be able to live in a proper way and a more true way. And everything that was said in this parak is going to be explained again in the second chapter. And here it was just the main aspects of everything. Bizat Hashem, there is a lot here. There's charts in this book that are going to help us to download more things. There's everything about Motzei Shabbat. What is Avdala? What is the candle? What is the wine? What is the Bissamim? What is Vihi Noam? What is the Yoshev Besed Elion? What is when we say Shir Ayom Yom Sheni the Shabbat Kodesh? Today is the second day of the Holy Shabbat. Right? This is the song that Leviim would sing. What do we need to have intention there? What is Monday? What is Tuesday? What is the work? How do we keep the name of Shabbat? How do we keep the How do we keep the energy of Shabbat with us the whole entire week? I promise you that this is an immense guide that will change your everyday avoda and make Shabbat that much more special. It's going to teach you how to go to the mikveh, how to prepare. What is the what is the cleaning of Shabbat? What is clothing on Shabbat? Do you wear white? Do you wear black? Do you wear shiny things? What do you wear? Everything is going to be talked about. Everything that could go into Shabbat and the six days in order to prepare for Shabbat, everything is here. Everything is here in a spiritual way brought down for us to be able to apply it immediately. Obviously, some of these things take practice. Obviously, some of these things take time to get used to and to get acquainted with and to implement them. Right? There's a download period. But it's all here. I've been through half of it, not even maybe a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter of it. A fifth of the book, maybe, let's say. That's opposite. A third of the book, right? It's out of this world. Out of this world. So, Bizat Hashem, we're going to keep on going. And uh, that was the introduction to what is Shabbat. And then we're going to go next week to <clears throat> how to how to how to merit to to really start to feel the light of Shabbat. And then we'll start with Motzei Shabbat. Then we're going to start learning about Motzei Shabbat and what is the work of Motzei Shabbat, what is the difference between the weekdays and Shabbat, what are the candles, like we said, what is our vita of Motzei Shabbat, all these different things. Is that Hashem? We're going to take our level of Shabbat observance and our connection to Hashem higher and higher to more dveikut, more bitu to Hashem. Again, this was Biyam Dar Kecha. The book is called Biyam Dar Kecha, written by Rav Pinchas Halberstadt, a student of Rav Echemai Morgenstern, and is the, the, the version of the book that talks about Shabbat Kodesh. May this be for Atzlacha of all the Chayalim and Rafu uh, Ashlema for all of the Ptsuim, all of the injured, and a speedily return. For all of those who are being held captive right now, may they have this light, this light of, of Hashem come down on them, right? And, and I just want to share right now a very, very, very important story that just happened. I was just told, a friend sent it to me right now, a story that just came out of Gaza two days ago. There were soldiers that they were in the middle of a battle, and it was clear that they were going to have like a 10, 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes to rest, right? So they took this time to rest. They all sat down inside a, a 
a destroyed building that they were using for cover. And they all sat down and they all, <clears throat> when it started to relax, and uh, the one soldier there, he realized that it was Shkia, the sun was coming down, and he said, I'm going to pray Mincha. I'm going to pray Mincha. So he started to go pray Mincha. He turned to Yerushalayim, right? We face Jerusalem when we pray. He turned to, towards Jerusalem, and that's where the wall that all of the soldiers had their back on. Everybody had their back to Jerusalem because they were resting, and that was the, the, the most complete wall. He turns, and he's praying, and there's an opening, like a window or opening, and he's praying towards Yerushalayim, to Hashem, and all of a sudden he sees a, mechabel come, a terrorist come out of the ground with an RPG aimed at the building. And he takes his gun out in the middle of the Shemona so he takes his gun, lifts it, starts screaming, Mechabel, Mechabel, and starts firing. Bam. They all get up, they all start shooting, and they kill this terrorist, and they were saved Whoa. by the Jew that stopped to pray that Mincha in the middle of Gaza. Yeah. And the whole entire 15, 20 guys in this unit that were together took upon themselves. Tomorrow they're making a minion to pray Mincha in the middle wow. of the war. This wow. is a mamash, a sibur that just happened two days ago in Gaza. See the power of tefillah, the power of a connection to Hashem. That everybody, so to say, not their fault, they weren't doing anything wrong, but they had their backs to Yerushalayim. They have no obligation to even pray. They're in danger. They have no obligation to pray. They're completely exempt. He realized he had a 15-minute break. He wanted to take his time in war to talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to pray Mincha. And by way of him deciding to pray Mincha, he saved all 15 of them from taking in a direct RPG hit. So may we mamash be to really attach to HaKadosh Baruch Hu even more and more and more. Bezat Hashem.